Okay guys, so now we're at the bench and we're going to be taking a look at what all we're going to be needing for this build. So we 3D printed the case, which over many alterations and whatnot, I tried to get this to where it would print where you didn't have to use any fasteners. It is kind of tight. I may do a few tweaks on it before I release the print, but eventually I will put this out on uh, Thingiverse for those of you that want to 3D print uh, your own case for this. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to 3D print this case. We use the Adafruit Power Boost module. Um, it is the Power Boost 500 charger. This will accept a LiPo battery as well as um, you can have 5 volt output on it and then it even has USB charging. So it's got a boost converter, charging IC circuit and everything for a single cell 33 volt LiPo battery. Which then brings us to the single cell LiPo battery. I have chosen a uh, 200 or 1200 milliamp hour battery. Um, I did a calculation. This was the only one that I could find. They were actually out of stock. I was going to do the 2000 milliamp hour battery. Um, this one was uh, the next best bet. So you could probably get with the 2000 milliamp hour battery, you'll get about 10 to six to 10 hours worth of playtime. This one, you're probably only going to get oh four to maybe four to four to six hours or so. I don't know. I'd have to do the math, but Basically, you need yourself a LiPo battery that's going to fit right into this case, as you can see, and uh, that way we can have uh, rechargeability. Then we're going to need a switch, so I just got one of these basic through-hole toggle switches. This is going to fit right into this feature that's in the side, so that way we will have a switch okay and then so that we have some indication as to when our battery is getting low, uh, the cool part is on this charging IC, I don't know if you can see it or read it, but they broke out a bunch of pins on it. One is a low battery pin, the other one is like a 5 volt powered up pin. So we're going to use two LEDs, we're going to use a red and a green one. The green one is going to be the uh, battery power, or the 5 volts coming out so we know that it's on. And then we're going to use a red LED to let us know when our battery power is low. And those fit into those two sides right there. So they'll slide right in to that fixture and we'll end up putting a dab of glue on. So we're also going to be using the good old Loctite glue to glue all this stuff down, the, at least the switch and these uh, two guys. You also need some bits of wire so that you can solder and build all this and put it all together. We also need one 100 ohm resistor. We also need one uh, 470 ohm resistor. And the reason the two different sizes is because one of these is going to be, one of these LEDs is going to be wired to the 5 volt rail. The other the LED is on the low battery rail, which is a 3.3 volt uh, rail. So I don't want it to um, smoke one of these guys and, and, and also I don't want it to be blinding bright either. So that's what we've chosen for this one. And I've also got a little bit of double double back tape because I don't want this battery. I mean, it fits fairly snug in here. I mean, that battery snaps in and fits fairly snug, but just in case on the off chance that it might try to pop loose and rattle around inside the box, this just keeps it from, from happening. And then due to the, the features that I put into the uh, sides of the board, this all should just snap together. Let's see, I got it backwards just like this, and it should all just snap right together. Now, on the Raspberry Pi board, we're gonna be using um, the five volt pin and the ground pin. Make sure that you get the right pins, and I'll show them to you when I'm soldering it up. Because if you don't, it does have, it, this does not have, at least on the GPIO, does not have reverse polarity protection. So you can blow this thing out of the water if you hook it up backwards, okay? So that's how we're gonna do it, so we can be able to power it. Guys, let's get to building.
So here we are, got it all soldered up, got the switch in, uh, soldered in the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and plug in the battery. Should be able to get this in this little tiny connector. If I can, there it is. Looks like there that goes. I may end up desoldering those LEDs just so it doesn't uh, drain the battery on that guy but basically now I should be able to turn it on and off and we may take and I may take and put the switch in the thing I got to thinking about was I need to be able to charge the battery and so the battery has to be connected to this charging IC before I can charge it so it's going to be interesting. I'm, I may have to um, switch the battery leg along with this. I may have to trim the battery and solder it to the other pole on this guy um, or something. So I'm going to have to look at that. But um, basically, there you go. Now all we have to do is close it up. If we can get it close up on us and get it to close up and there he goes we should be able to fire up the pie hey guys I just wanted to show you it all put together I did have to make a modification let me see if I can zoom in on this you now let's get a little more light on the subject there we go um, I did have to make a slight mod to this and it's because one thing I noticed um, that uh, when you plug the battery in, uh, this guy turns <clears throat> uh, on. And there is an enable pin. I don't know if you can see that. It's EN enable pin. And I'm taking that to my switch. And then I'm taking the other end of the switch to this ground leg that I have here. And what that's doing is if you ground down this enable pin, it will shut the output off to this and shut off the power LED. Now, it still shows you the low battery LED, and of course on our unit, you're gonna see the low battery LED, but the power will not be on. If you turn the switch on, you'll get the power light, and you will get, the Pi will start, and you will get the output power for the, for the device. So, I believe 
that that charging one will extinguish once you have fully charged this battery. I haven't fully charged this battery because of the fact that uh, it's, it's new, it's a brand new battery and they always, LiPos or any lithium batteries, they're always stored at 50% charge. So that's the reason that it's low. So I'm gonna charge it up and I'm assuming that'll go away. But anyway, in any case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this sucker together. So I'm gonna fold it up, all the wires all nice and neat, put her together. And then I designed this case where you kind of have to push down on this to get it to snap. And then once it snaps, there we go. And there we have it. There we have it. And there it is. That should be it and it should be good. All right. Well, guys, I believe that is it for putting it together. I'm going to throw it on a charge. All right, guys, well, welcome to a TV that's in our room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fire this guy up. I got the controller. I got my little box of a deal. I got a cable that's out. Now, the idea behind this is you should be able to, let's say, pretend this is a hotel and I'm wanting to play some video games. I should be able to just take my HDMI cable, plug it into the TV, take this guy, plug it right in. And that's really all you have to do. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move the camera around. I know I'm shooting a TV screen, but I'm gonna move the camera around and uh, actually I'll probably put it on my hand. That way I can show you the TV screen, I can show you it, and I can show you that it's all, it's all working together. So here we go. Okay guys, we're in handheld mode right now. So I've got, I got the controller here. Sorry for it being kind of dark, but I'm right in front of a huge bright Christ, uh, Christmas tree. Yeah, I'm in front of a bright Christmas tree. That looks like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? No, nah, it's right in front of my TV. All right, so I'm going to kick this puppy on. So there's the on. So we should be getting a signal soon. Oh, we've got the raspberry in the corner. Checking it out. So <clears throat> seemingly gonna boot. I, I wanna see if the battery has enough power to power this thing. It looks like it does. Looks like RetroPie is loading. See if it'll, we'll get on to emulation station. I'm turning on my controller. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm turning on my controller. It found my controller, so we're connected Bluetooth through the controller. So, so far, so good. There's emulation station. Wait for the camera to white balance for us. There we go. So far, so good. And there we go. All right, so I've got some stuff. Again, I'm going to choose a Sega game. I do not want the copyright monster to get a hold of me. Um, let's go with Aladdin, because I, I have Aladdin as well. It's a pretty fun game. Seems to be working. I, I think I even heard sound, too. Oh, there's even sound. I can hear it. Oh, sweet. I know there was a problem when Emulation Station first came out. Sound was an issue. Hey guys, it looks like it is working. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand, but uh, yeah. Oh, I haven't played this game in so long. Agrabah Market. All right. I look up, I can look up, I can look down, I can squat, I can go back and forth. Yeah. All right, sweet. This is awesome. Oh, I can pause. Can I pull up RetroArch? Yes, I can. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that's pretty much going to conclude that one. So I'm going to put the camera back on the on the uh, tripod here. Uh, there we go. I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod, and we'll wrap this all up. Okay, guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this build. This was actually one of probably the most funnest projects I think I've done just just yet, just because of the concept of it. That I'll be able to have some cool little trinket to take with me. So, and the fact that we 3D printed the case ourselves, we designed all the features ourselves, and did everything that way. So, yeah, and. This whole build, I believe, if I did the math right, is under $100. So for under $100, you can get all the video games that you own basically in one spot. Now there's minor tweaks, obviously, to the uh, software that you have to do to get certain games to play correctly. 
But hey, you know, we're all hackers, we're all makers, we're all DIY enthusiasts, so you know, it works, it works out. So we, we don't mind uh, programming this stuff. So I cannot wait, guys, to get this sucker. Uh, really, I'm probably gonna leave it on this TV, actually. This is actually a part of my bedroom, so I may just leave it on this TV and just lay in bed and play, play some video games, man. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. All these old uh, classic, classic video games. So I highly recommend that you guys, if you are into gaming and you're into retro gaming, that you uh, pick up one of these Raspberry Pi Zeros and pick up a few tools and one of these controllers. It is awesome. Uh, if you want a little more power, you can do the Raspberry Pi 3 and just get a case off of Thingiverse or something like that. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, or my mini, mini factory or something like that. This case, however, I will go ahead and I will post the STLs. That way, if you want to download one yourself, there was still some kind of closeness and some places that I had to shave off. Um, so I'm probably going to 3D print that a couple more times and make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's got enough clearance. Um, and I will say, I do recommend that you may have to print it a few times and tweak it even on your end because I'm using the one owl printer um, set up the way I like it. You guys might be using, I don't know, a printer bot or, or something else. And I know that it should print on the simple um, it's a very small case um, fits in the palm of your hand so um, you should be able to uh, print it on most 3d printers or pretty much all 3d printers really should be able to print this so but just for settings and whatnot I uh, I recommend that you may have to tweak it but you can give me comments I'm gonna go ahead and create a Thingiverse account and I'll probably have this available on Thingiverse I'll put a link down below and you'll be able to download the uh, STL files for it so guys thank you very much I hope that you enjoyed this build um, hopefully it was as fun to watch as it was for me to make and uh, guys with that, I think that ought to do it. Make sure and follow me on uh, Twitter so you don't miss out on any updates. Uh, make sure that you uh, subscribe to me on Instructables. This whole uh, project will probably go out on Instructables as well. Um, Google Plus, like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Definitely share the videos because that helps out the channel a lot, especially with all this YouTube craziness. And guys, I will see you next time. Ha <laughs>